Good morning, Kim. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. So, good. Kim, uh, we're going to shoot this video to talk about your 12-year-old boy, Josh. Right? He's had some anxiety, trouble going to school, or you getting him to school, and uncontrollable crying, and specifically a trip that you had planned, and he did not want to get on the plane. Right? So th yeah. I think that's what prompted you to reach out to me to see if I could help, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so why don't you take it from here? Let me know what's been going on with Josh. Um, well, let's talk about what happened more specifically before you came to me. So the reasons why you brought him, and then we'll go into how he's doing now. Okay. So, well, the reasons why we brought him were it was it was it was building. He was having trouble going to school. He would say he was sick. He couldn't get couldn't go to school. Couldn't do it that day. Then at night, uh, getting him to bed was a thing. It was he would not go to bed without us dissecting the day over and over and over and over. It was like me laying in bed with him for an hour. It was getting progressively longer all the time. And then at Christmas time, we, we gifted the kids with a trip, thought it would be this great thing. He then trans, I mean, he was still having the issues with school, still having the issues with bed, but then it was completely fixated on the trip. And I, as it got closer and closer, so as Jan we enter January, coming to the end of January, the panic started setting in. Then it was like, I can't put it off any longer. This trip is coming. I can't do it, mom. And this is what would go on at night. I can't do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm scared. I'm going to miss the dogs. I'm going to get lost in the airport. Like every spectrum of thought from one end to the other of what could go wrong. It was a wrong. daily thing, wasn't it? What's that? This was a daily thing too, right? Every day. Yeah. Every day. Okay. Yeah. So basically it got to the point where I said to my husband, I, I, I don't think we're going to get him on the plane and I'm not dragging a 12 year old kid against his will onto what's supposed to be a beautiful trip. Yeah. So we, we need to do something. And we had, we had treated Josh's anxiety through the years. Like this started in grade three. So this wasn't new, but nothing really seemed to quell it. It just continued to build and it would, fashion itself in different ways but it was always there mm -hmm. and continuing to worsen and then it just seemed like the trip was kind of I don't know the straw that broke the camel's back for him or whatever and so I, you tried I, multiple other things first yes yeah yeah and ultimately you decided to try hypnotism yep well we we had saw your videos online and actually Chuck's brother had reached out to us and said you know have you seen any of surrender's videos i was thinking about Josh when i was watching them and so we we had been watching them and i said to Chuck why don't you text him and let like let's try it what have we got to lose yeah it's quite common that when people <laughs> come to me it's, like, it's it's what happens and i know that that's just the nature of the business and that's the way it is but and i'm and i'm fine with it because people try other things and this is usually the last resort, but then they get results. We, you, try the more, you try the more conventional things, sure. right, initially. And then, Absolutely. And then you, you realize when that's not quelling it, you've got to go outside, outside the box yeah. to get a hold on it. Because at the end of the day, this is his quality of life. Let's talk, about, let's talk about his quality of life. So what's happened? Well, first of all, how many sessions have you had? It's been two, um, two. one hour sessions, right? Yeah. Well, the, I think the first one was... First an hour, yeah, an hour and a half, maybe yes. Okay, and then second yeah. time, um, an, an hour. hour. And we had initially thought that he would be coming for the full um, protocol, which is ten and a half hours. And I understand he made an interesting comment to you the other day, or to maybe to Chuck, his dad. Yeah, yeah. He said he said the other day to his dad, um, because after the first session, we asked him how he felt. I I feel pretty good. You know, and that was kind of it. He didn't, and I, and we just kept it very general. And then, um, he, we said, well, we're, so we'll set up a second one. And then he said, you know, I don't know if I need to go back. And so we said, because us being us, we're like, oh no, you're going back. We're, we're following, we're seeing this through to the end. You need to go back. You need to go back. And I don't know if I do. So he went back for the second one. And then after the second one, we said, how do you feel? And, and he said, I don't, I don't think I need to see surrender anymore and then of course because he is who he is he says I, I mean I like him and everything I mean I just don't think I need him for my anxiety yeah and that's so. success that's success I commonly hear that especially from people that are from from kids they don't have you know 40 
eight or 49 years of baggage to deal with. They've usually got one or two incidents. So I'm not sure that I've seen anybody under the age of um, 18 actually follow through with the entire five sessions. And I usually tell the parents that I don't know how long it's going to take. I've had some extreme success with people that come from one session and have said, I don't need to come back. I feel great. Why would I go back? And what I tell the parents is, yeah, exactly. That means that we have success, right? This yeah, is I think it's, prevention it's... that requires a person to keep coming back over and over to feel better. Um, the idea is to just fix the problem so it goes away. Do you feel that's what's happened with Josh now? What are I some do. other examples of how things have changed in your household? Well, the biggest thing is at night, it's, it's like I still lay with him and that's, that's just his habit, but, but there's no talking. He goes right to sleep, so that's huge. That's a major deviation from the normal routine. Um, school, albeit after our first session, it was, cut, was nearing the March break, but there was a week we put him on the bus and it, there was no issues. Um, and he talked about an exercise he did with you. He didn't get into specifics. He says, I do something before I get on the bus. Okay. Just something that, and he didn't tell me and we didn't ask. And I, I know the one day I did ask him, I think after the second one, I said, you know, how did it go, bud? And he said, well, I, I, I'm not, I'm not supposed to talk about it, mom. And I said, no, I understand that, honey. Just in general, how did it go? No, I feel I'd like good. to clarify that. And that, that is true. I, I did tell him not to talk about it. But what I tell, um, I told him to do is to talk about the results and talk about how he feels good. The reason I told him not to specifically talk about um, specific exercises and mental exercises I've given him to do is because I've given him suggestions, some of them under hypnosis, and I need those suggestions to just land right and just marinate over time so that he gets the results. If he starts talking about the details with his parents, then the natural tendency is for you to give your opinion or to talk about how that's interesting or I think that works because of this. And then that will add another suggestion to the one that I gave. Does it mean that it's going to harm him um, and harm and, and, on, and stall his progress? Maybe not, but maybe. So why okay. take the risk? So just as an explanation, that's why. I know I explained this to you, but I want to explain that for the viewers that are watching this video. There's no secrets or anything. It's just I don't want other suggestions to tamper with the ones that I've given him because ultimately the goal is for him to feel better and to be a happier kid and to enjoy life and not torment himself with the thoughts that are in his mind. That's the goal, right? And as well, long as he does that, then we have success. That's right. And I think any parent at the end of the day, like I told him, oh, quite honestly, but I don't care how it's happening. All I care is that it is. Perfect. And, and, that, and that you feel good. And I said, and I don't need to know how. It has nothing to do with mom. That's your relationship with surrender. And that's your thing. But I said, all I care about is that what, like the only thing that should matter to any parent is that you're seeing your child not be burdened with the worrying about everything. And his worries were extensive. Mm -hmm. they, the motivation was the trip, but the worries were everything from, you know, what could happen to his mom and dad to to death, to crazy things he couldn't control. So that was ruining his quality of life because these are not worries any 12 year old boy should be burdened with. Yeah. And to it's see those lifted. Fear, yeah. fear of something that hasn't happened yet. What was the comment that you told me earlier that he made when the plane landed? Well, the, yeah, this was the biggest thing for me when I said to Chuck, like, this is, this is almost like, who is this kid? Would we, because Josh has always spoke like an older man, like he's very mature, but he's, he's in the back <laughs> of the car and, and he's sitting there and he's got his little legs crossed, you know, and he's talking. And I said, and he's like, ah, and, and he said, I, I feel so good right now. And, and I, and Chuck went to say something, you know, about something coming up and he said, D dad, dad, just don't say anything. I just want to savor this moment of having no anxiety at all. I'm just going to sit and savor it. So everybody, even his sister was like dead quiet in the car and we just let him have that time <laughs> where he had not one worry because I don't think that we've ever seen that. Yeah. Like ever, even his sister was like, wow. Like, yeah, who is this? This, kid? this guy's amazing. Whoever this guy is, he's amazing. Yeah. No, that's perfect. That makes me really happy to hear that. So that means everything that we did is working. So let's talk about what you would say to other parents out there that have children that have anxiety and that it either, you know, it manifests itself in many ways. I've had clients that actually get physical symptoms, migraine headaches, vomiting, um, diarrhea. It comes out in, in many different ways. What do you say to a parent that's watching this video that's wondering if their child might be helped by 
hypnosis and and it's also neuro linguistic programming there's not it's not like i brought him in here and i hypnotized him for the entire two hours we did some yeah. talking hypnosis was probably only about 30 percent of the time that he has spent with me so far right mm -hmm. so what would you say to those parents that are sitting on the fence wondering if they should reach out to me or wondering if hypnosis is just you know too out there for them to even consider well i would say that they should reach out to you and and first of all, speak to you because the way that you explain it, it's not like the, I think the image people have is that hypnotist on the stage where he's making people do ridiculous things. And that's the thing that people think of. And it's not like that. You talk about the levels of consciousness and all that kind of stuff. That's actually rather scientific. So I would say if that's what's holding you back, then reach out and talk about what real hypnotism is and not the display you see on stages. Mm -hmm. And then B, I would say, you have absolutely nothing to lose and everything to gain. This, this is your child's mental health. You have, you have the ability to, to correct that for them, which is all any parent ever wants. Every parent says, I, I would say, I said it a hundred times, if I could take it away, but I would. If I could feel that way for you, I would. I wish you didn't. Instead of doing all that, just reach out because, because it's going to work. And you have nothing to lose and you have everything to gain. You have your child's mental health to give back to them. That like, I, I can't say enough about it to have, to have gone from, you know, an anxiety of a 10 to at moments a zero and at worst, maybe a two, which is no different than just most people day to day is, is been life changing for us, yeah, you know? Absolutely. Okay, perfect. Listen, thank you very much for doing this. I appreciate it. And I know yeah. Josh has got another scheduled appointment. We're, we're doing them over Zoom right now. But we did, um, you took part in that free webinar that I did. And over Zoom, I mean, if you just buy into the experience, it feels just like you're here. So the results are every bit as good. Um, yes. Now, if um, he doesn't want to, and he says, you know what, I'm fine. I don't have any anxiety. That's fine. Just let me know. Because in my mind, that's a success. If I can achieve the results in two sessions instead of five, that's a good thing for me because it means I'm just getting that much better at what I do and I'm more and more effective. Right. Mm -hmm. so, well, I think parents have to wrap their mind around that. It's okay that it, that you don't follow through on all five. It's oh, okay absolutely. that it happens quicker, right? Because you think, Oh, I've committed to these. I want him to get everything out of this that he needs to, but you saying he has, like this is the end game. Yeah. If he had anxiety and he wants to get rid of it and now the anxiety is gone, then why do you need to come coming back? Yeah. There's no point. You've got your goal. You've achieved it. And right. that's it. There's no need for anything further. As long as he keeps doing what I've told him to do. Every once in a while, a check-in or something to ensure that he's still doing what I said, that's all that's required. Right? Yes. And that can happen over the phone in 15 minutes. And I've had a couple of phone calls with Josh just to make sure. So. Yeah, you have. And, and I know initially, even after the first session, before he had the second one, he said, you know, I wish I could take surrender on the trip with me. Like, I feel like he would make, and I said, well, he's going to teach you that he, he, you kind of, I guess not that you're, he's taking you, but that he has the ability to do what you do himself. So I said, just be patient. It, it will come, bud. Like, I'm sure he will teach you that. Yeah. But I remember him, you know, feeling so good being with you that wanting to actually take you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm there in his mind and that's why he's getting these results. So, yeah. All right. Well, listen, thanks very much again. Yep. Thank you. Okay. All right. Bye for now. Okay. Take care. So, bye. Hello, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you've got any questions or you'd like to contact me, you can do so by visiting my website or my Facebook page. All the information you need is available in the description box below. I look forward to hearing from you.